Welcome back to Smorgor Fortress. So I've let the game progress a few days. It is currently the mid-spring, third of Slate, and the Masons have finally gotten around to finishing off some of the new tower constructions, bringing up some extra stone. So let's go ahead and get the new fortification set up. So F for fortifications. And I think I'm going to use granite. Uh, there's no real reason to or no real difference between various materials for the most part. However, I just like a little bit of variety in my buildings. Uh, one downside to building out the corners like this first, uh, it is possible for the dwarves to get stuck if, say, they build this this fortification first. I do not believe they can cross this diagonal. However, because the this floor is actually already designated, someone at some point should get around to getting it built before they have any serious issues come up. And actually, they, they are able to cross the diagonal, so it's not really an issue at all. It looks like the snow has melted. Uh, I did do a slight traffic adjustment to keep them off the frozen river as much as possible. And here we have a block floor. Uh, this is, and there goes the ice, this floor is mostly for caravans, just so that they have a guaranteed route in and out. The animal culling is continuing, so hopefully that'll increase the frame rate a little bit. And the other thing is... This is a temporary uh, sort of experimental dumping pile that I've done. So this needs to be reclaimed. So odds are that I'll occupy another couple of dwarves for a little bit. Well, it may seem like a, a good idea to try to dispose of all of the various corpse remains and leftovers and bits and pieces. Uh, things like turtle shells, uh, skulls, well, not so much skulls, but bones are actually very useful. Uh, vermin remains, like these rat remains, uh, vermin show up as purple, so rat remains and whatnot are effectively useless, they just take up uh, stockpile space. Now the stockpile inside is not going to decay nearly as quickly as the stockpile outside, so it's simply a, an issue of waiting for the sort of organic uh, bits to decay off. And that will leave bones. Uh, the bones can either be uh, carved into bone crafts and sold, um, possibly not to the elves, although uh, the bones can also be carved into bolts, which can be, um, let's call it, donated to the elves. Uh, such donations often yield a rather 
large trading uh, trade with the elves that year, although the following year may uh, result in some unexpected fun. So the farm should be moving along. I don't quite remember the new shortcut key for that. I think I'm going to increase the farm, the farmer count a little bit. Although realistically, it doesn't need to be increased all that much. That's a weaponsmith, that's a stain crafter. Harvest plant, planting, planting, and these guys are legendary, so I don't actually need to do any sort of adjustments with them. Checking on the. Alright, the Mason's Workshop has finally finished its production. So, build, workshop, and let's go ahead and trim the pin and pasture area down a little bit. Probably just a little bit more. There we go. It doesn't really matter, but I like to keep the uh, workspaces visible so I don't accidentally miss something. Now if we go to the dining hall, let's have a quick look and make sure no one is about to have their clothing uh, fall apart on them. So V to view the creatures, and usually I just do this in a spot check sort of deal. So they have slightly worn shoes, no big deal. Uh, slightly worn hood, they're actually fine. So just kind of go through and check a couple people. Uh, they're armored. Straight bowl. All right, so it looks like, with a couple of exceptions, everyone has fully intact items, and those who do not uh, simply have just a little bit of wear and tear they're not going to worry about yet. So what that tells me is the current supply of new clothing is such that uh, dwarves are able to replace clothing as they need to. The next thing I want to do is let's go and finish some of these statues. So as I've mentioned in previous videos, uh, the stairs that I have, I leave the or I carve out the middle section instead of having a middle stair there. So you can go to buildings, uh, S for statue, and then I'm just going to grab Kind of whatever statues available. I'm not really picky about this. Uh, the idea behind this is as dwarves uh, transit the fort, they will be pretty much constantly passing one of these statues. So it gives them good, good thoughts for um, seeing well-crafted items. Uh, the odds are relatively high that Some of these statues are of people either in the fortress or who are known deity type people.
people or individuals. So the dwarves will get extra uh, happy thoughts for seeing uh, either themselves or someone who they have a good relationship with. And while I'm here, I'm going to go ahead and remove Apparently there wasn't a stockpile. Uh, at one point I did have a dumping stockpile here. So I will need to somehow get all this stuff uh, moved to a new one. In fact, what I can do is uh, simply order this stuff dumped. And that will be sorted here in a few minutes. Those have statues, those have nothing over there yet, but and with these golden statues they are going to take the better part of a week or so to get installed, because they are very, very heavy. The other effect that the uh, statue placement will have is it will rather significantly increase the value of the fortress. Although, seeing as how these are only golden statues and not really anything else, and the fortress is already over worth over eight million, it's not going to make a huge difference. But hopefully, we can get a couple larger ambushes come in, or sieges rather. The only downside to kind of doing this indiscriminately is that it is possible for a dwarf to see someone that they dislike and they will have a slight negative thought from basically seeing a statue made in the honor of someone that they don't like. Uh, it is possible for them to attack the statue and try to kind of disassemble it. But that is rather unlikely, seeing as how we only have six dwarves of average happiness. And more dumping to be done. I did take the opportunity between episodes to mark some of the... No, those have already been actually taken care of. Uh, mark some of the metal items that are of little use for recycling. And it appears that those have already been handled. So, in order to build the bridge, uh, again, sort of a funny thing about dwarven physics, you can, in theory, support an entire fortress off of a single stairwell. So, it is entirely possible to build upwards instead of downwards. Uh, however, if, the, if said stairwell is ever deconstructed or destroyed for whatever reason, the entire fortress will pancake and probably kill anyone inside of it 
and anyone caught underneath the falling fortress. So, building outward is the same as building the floor. Build construction floor. The only thing to keep in mind is that you're actually going to be building, you're not going to be building underneath the walls. The walls are attached on their own. So, build inside one, like so, and there goes a very large quantity of quartzite blocks. Realistically, there's no reason for me to be uh, for me to be building this large, but I want there to be enough room for a squad of military, or for two squads of military dwarves to be able to pass each other. And seeing as how this is one of the major ambush points, I figured I might as well splurge, and plus it helps use up the the stone blocks. And it would appear that these items are still forbidden, so the reclaim, and that'll get a couple more people moving. So at this point, I believe I've covered most of the uh, sort of um, basic dwarf fortress uh, concepts, military, farming, bedrooms, uh, how to construct buildings, how to do uh, kind of freeform constructions, some defense guides. And uh, like how to understand the thoughts and moods and whatever of the dwarves. The only thing I have not covered is how to deal with a siege. But realistically, all a siege, all it takes to break a siege is either killing enough of the invaders, or, well, if you kill them all, then of course the siege breaks. Uh, the other option is to simply try to outlast them. Uh, sieges usually, usually last for an entire season, although it is possible to have back to back sieges or invasions or whatever. So it is very, very possible for uh, you to go almost an entire year uh, under siege. Having uh, a defensive setup like I do here, most of the invaders are going to pile onto the map at some location, and then they're going to form up around the main gate. I'm not sure if that's a some sort of procedurally detected, hey, this is where we should form up, or if that's because of the traps, but that's why I've decided to build the this tower out here. Everyone kind of piles around here, we've got the archers shooting them, so that forces them to either move forward and into the traps, move backward, and off the map, or stay there and be slowly uh, whittled away at. So, come over here. What I'm looking for is this lever here to be pulled. 
and hopefully someone will get around to pulling it before too, too long. Uh, what that's going to do is uh, seal up this. When I originally made this design, this was the first time I had tried to do any sort of large freeform construction, I messed up slightly and made these fortifications. So what will end up happening is if a if a military dwarf who's patrolling up here goes off duty and there's a siege, they come down the stairs, see the invaders, panic, and run back upstairs. So they end up sort of getting trapped there, and it becomes a little bit difficult to get them to resupply. Uh, consequently, though, if they are up there and shooting at invaders, it's very likely that the siege will end up breaking very soon. So it's not incredibly critical, but now that the outside has been sealed off, it's not going to be nearly as big of a deal. Uh, in fact, the bridge is blocked line of sight entirely. So, with that, I think I'm going to actually wrap up this series uh, or rather part one of the series. Uh, part two will be a lot more of the sort of mega construction, uh, wacky fun time sort of projects with the dwarves. If there are any, uh, any questions or whatever, please go ahead and leave those in the comments. As far as continuing on, uh, what I will probably do is I will let this fortress run for another, uh, it's currently 17, so I will probably let this fortress uh, run until 25, uh, probably the winter of 25, and then I will make a backup copy of the, of the world, basically just do a fork and uh, abandon this fortress, run a uh, run through the world history, see kind of what all happened. I'm actually not pre uh, I'm not seeing myself lose this fortress, although there are a couple of fun things that I'm going to be trying that might end up flooding the fortress with various things, uh, which would force a and abandoned. But what I will probably do, I have a second uh, fortress site not far from here picked out, and I will start again with the the new fortress. The only reason I have uh, I haven't started already is that I want a little bit more world history to occur. Once I once I've got a couple more years in this, I think there should be enough uh, events and whatnot that are roaming around. So I'll go ahead and close this fortress out for the time being, start the other one, and then I might actually come back here in adventure mode and probably adjust some of the traps a little bit so I can actually get through. Uh, I have played adventure mode for maybe an hour or so, but just kind of let this uh, open everything up a little bit uh, and then come in in adventure mode and work around, maybe loot everything, which I know won't be uh, won't really be realistic, but it's a thought and it's something to try. And this way I, I know for certain that there's something uh, either with really, really good loot already available or that's say completing another death trap, sort of depending on the state that it's in when I close it out. So anyway, that will be that for this uh, sort of part one. I am going to go ahead and let the uh, fortress run a little bit longer. And actually, the final part I will be adding A final video, which will be a final video uh, covering the trade.
So as soon as I get a trade caravan showing up, I'll go ahead and start up the recording again and show how that's done. So until then, stay safe and make sure that your doors uh, don't start withdrawing from society.